morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Sapphire Princess Princess Theatre. My name is Shan from Singapore. Can I have a quick show of hand? How many of you have been to Singapore more than three times? Okay, at least one time. Right, awesome. Right, I'm so glad to be here today to share with you some tips and techniques how to speak spectacularly, to speak like a star. But before I start, let me introduce a bit about myself and why am I here today. So, some people call me Shan Swan. There's actually a story behind it. Would you like to hear more? Today, I would like to have a more engaging and interactive session because we're going to have more hands-on activities later in the second half. So, more about myself. When I was growing up, my mom would train me to be one of the school storyteller as well. So, throughout the years, I've trained myself to speak in front of a huge audience. But somewhere down the line, there was a teacher who called me, You are an ugly duckling. Can you imagine that? That line from the precious words of the teacher dented my ego, dented my self-esteem. So I grew up into my adulthood and brought that tiny failure into my working life. I couldn't speak up. I would always mutter under my breath and wherever I have to speak to my colleagues and my boss, I couldn't speak very clearly. So that was my struggle in life. But however, three years ago, I joined a group called the Toastmasters Group. Can I have a quick show of hands? Are there any Toastmasters in the house today? Right, maybe not in this venue. Right, so to give you a flavor, Toastmaster is the practice platform where everybody gets to practice public speaking, build up your confidence in terms of being a better communicator or a leader and serve in your community. It's actually a non-profit organization that operates throughout the world. Over 190 countries around the world have their home base Toastmaster Club. And right in Singapore, where I lived and grew up, there are at least 250 clubs in Singapore spending 5,000 members. So, there was one day, one of my mentors said, Sean, I think I would like to give you a challenge. Would you like to take it? So I said, yes, what is that? And he said to me, you know, there's this very good accelerated growth opportunity. So I would like to extend that opportunity for you to fulfill your, your dream as a storyteller. So I say, okay, I'll do it. I can do it, right? So from that day onwards, my life has changed. So three years ago, I took part in a humorous speech contest in Singapore. Right, and these are all my family members and community in Singapore. So it was at the club level, and then I proceeded to the area level, which covers the whole precinct, and move on to the district level that covers the entire nationwide competition. But what was so marvelous to me is that I grew, I learned, and I transformed from an ugly duckling to a beautiful black swan to be able to share with you some tips and techniques and through that I hope really to encourage you because at the back of my heart at the deep down of my heart is to benefit you and your family so that you can take home a bit of nuggets to share with your friends and loved ones how they can use these techniques to overcome any difficulty any struggles in life or in practically in any stressful situation when you have to speak in front of a huge audience or pitching or making an elevator pitch right so there i was transforming myself from an ugly duckling to a beautiful black swan if you're too far you might notice that the prints on my shirt and my dresses are always filled with swans metaphors because it reminds me of who i am how God has created me to be a beautiful masterpiece. We do not need to be um, judged by other judgment or other things that people said. And through the Toastmaster journey, I'm really honored that a lot of people have come into my life, have coached me, and I uh, emerged as the youngest female contestant in Singapore to win the Humorous Speech Champion Contest. And also I got to uh, rub shoulders with legendary, legendary leaders from the America, from the International uh, Toastmaster International Immediate Past President. Um, and chairman as well. So today I'm really delighted to be able to, to share with you some um, tips and techniques how to speak like a star. 
So this is the secret, the essence of what will make you think, perform, and speak like a star. So I drafted it based on my acronym for simplicity. You know, S means about stories. It's about speaking out. It's about warming up your vocal, right? To develop a vocal charisma. You know, in the world today, a lot of us might not have accessibility to microphone because we don't have the benefit of a huge auditorium or theater like Princess Theater. So in some group settings, you will need to project your voice forward. So voice coaches around the world have implemented simple warm-up activities that you can do as well. So later in the section, I would like you to participate so we can have some kind of fun, shall we? Right. Second acronym is about humor. Show of hands, how many of you were here last night for the visual comedy and mind? Anyone was here? Right, awesome, almost half of the audience. I was sitting in the audience as well, like yourself. I was mesmerized and really captivated by the performer here. Imagine a 45 minutes performance without any words, but just visual body language, the non-verbals. As you know, our body speaks a lot. Our body is the language, and you, all of you, is the carrier of the message. And today, I'm gonna review to you some hidden secrets told by social psychologists as well as social scientists about how we can modify and reconfigure our bodies to make that spectacular performance whether it's a performance or speaking or making a proposal to your loved ones this is the hidden secret right thirdly it is actually about authenticity all of us know that we have our failures we have obstacles that we've been through it might be past failures, broken relationships that need healing. All of us have our life stories and experience that we would like to share. But sometimes we are just so embarrassed by the mistake that we are not able to open up to give that precious idea, that precious learned lesson to somebody who really needs it in the audience, right? I'm talking about authenticity. It's about being in your skin, comfortable being yourself not only to your loved ones, but to a group of your community people who need you to be there. So authenticity makes you a more humanized person and a personality that will shine forward as a person and as a leader in our community. And fourthly, it is about novelty. What do I mean by that? Novelty to me, it means about creativity, creating your signature sound. For instance, can you imagine the first sound that came out from your computer, from your computing device, was actually invented in Singapore. It was first created by a person called Mr. Sim Wong Hu from the Creative Technology. He invented a small microchip set that lasted through the world. And one day in context in Las Vegas, Michael Jackson actually came to the Singapore Pavilion to preview that. And that became the world-renowned sound for Singapore. And today, Singapore is well known as a garden city, a city of invention, inventions, and a city of aspirations for leaders and global um, visitors like to visit our country. And, and what I mean is really about creating your personal style, your signature style. So I will share with you the process of creating this novelty so that you can benefit from this process because you can attain it as well. So right, as we see in the animal kingdom, animals, swans, cobras, they will open up and they will stretch themselves because this is all about power dynamics. Do you agree? The animal kingdom is such and so are the humans. Right? Our body speaks, our facial expressions, our bodies. Right? Here where I am standing now, I could see a variety of facial expressions, body language, people, some people are excited, leaning forward, some people are just relaxing because after all, this is the princess cruise, isn't it? So there is a variety and mirage of non-verbals that we can capture from just by looking at one person for a brief 15 seconds. And what I'm saying is that your body speaks and it's of power and dominance. How good it is if we can actually modify our body, 
No, I'm not talking about cosmetic surgery, but really modifying, expanding your body such that you will get that testosterone whenever you make a great presentation. <laughs> so to me, the essence of it lies in delivering a masterpiece with pride and as well as power. Look at this athlete, right? Research has shown that athletes or champions around the world have a very natural victory sign. They will have a victory sign like what you see there, as well as the Chinian approach. It comes so naturally because it is the universal sign language for having feeling the pride and honor of winning. So we have learned that our mind can change our body. But today, my preposition is that, do you know that our bodies can change our minds too, right? So I'll walk you through this process where you can reconfigure your state management so that you can overcome any stressful situation, overcome any nervousness, anxiety in every situation. And do you know this is one of my first attempts in a cruise presentation because all my life I've been working in the government public service and really um, dedicating my life to serve my Toastmasters community. I've not really drawn or really come out of my comfort zone to speak to an international audience like me. So I'm really glad that today um, I have the opportunity to share and maybe get some feedback from all of you as well. So to me, our body language speaks a lot, and our non-verbals governs how we think and feel about ourselves. After all, our thoughts and feelings are controlled by our hormones. Right. This is a very common sign in classrooms worldwide. In seminars, you will see people busy with their phones, or they are folding up. They are making themselves more. They are feeling powerless, right? They're feeling lethargic, tired. But why do we do that? There are many reasons why they do that, of course. Right, but today, looking at the audience, there are really ways for you to open up and also reconfigure your mind and state management. The second secret I like to share is actually visualizing your success. And what I'm saying is that mental preparation is the key. Right now, we'll do a simple activity, right? It's a simple mental simulation. So may I invite everyone to close your eyes and hear me, right? Okay. As you're walking down the steps of the Princess Theater, you're walking gingerly up the stage. Step one, step two, step three, and finally, you're up on the beautiful, gorgeous stage of Princess Theater. The technicians are helping you prepare and you're breathing in. Some signs of nervousness, you're breathing in very quickly. But as you walk to the center of the stage, your mind is happy, your mind is calm, and you walk to the middle of the stage you look at the audience, you establish eye contact with everybody in the room, from the left to the right and up the second row. You make the biggest and happiest smile that you know. The lights are shining on you, and you breathe in deeply, preparing your mind preparing your first sentence, preparing your mind to engage the audience. You're prepared to engage the audience. You're prepared to captivate the audience. You're prepared to share with the audience about life lessons. You're prepared to deliver your masterful, your masterful piece of presentation. When the lights, the camera, actions, and the director says, you are on. Ladies and gentlemen, you may open your eyes. This is a very simple mental preparation activity that you can do anytime, any situation where you are being told to make a public presentation. So you need to rehearse in your mind many times
times the procedure of opening up, going up the stage, mentally preparing your mind and your state, your breathing. And I remember one of my mentor actually said, when you are at the platform or any situation, do not speak immediately. Right? It speaks of authority if you stand in front and make build rapport with the people in the audience, establishing the eye contact with the people, getting them your attention. Right? In one of the situations, I noticed that politicians <coughs> worldwide like to do that. Whenever they step on the podium, they will not start immediately. They will hold the audience's attention by a dynamic pause. Because with that, it is a sense of authority, it's a sense of credibility to the voters, to the electors, right? This conveys authority to them, that you are in charge. So ladies and gentlemen, remember this powerful technique that can make any presentations come to life. How you start any presentation is the most critical. How you start will govern what results and what takeaways that you will leave the impressions in your audience's mind. Because how you start is how beautiful the impression you will leave the audience with. Remember that. Another tip is that you must train your body and mind to be in synchronized with your body. For instance, you are really feeling a lot of butterflies in your stomach. Everybody feels that. Sometimes I feel that too, because I'm human, right? All the butterflies are fluttering everywhere, any country, because you're so comfortably speaking in your home ground. But what happens when you're outside, right? The butterflies continue to fly in your stomach. So my advice to you is that, why don't you control the formation of the butterflies forming in your tummy, right? So controlling your anxiety, controlling your nervousness, it can be done. Just by what we have done earlier, the mental simulation, the mental rehearsal, checking the venue beforehand, asking for prior information about the area, the environment, will greatly help you and enhance the presentation and give you that leap of faith when you present on stage, live in front of an audience. Visualization, visualization of your success. Now thirdly, it is about this state management. As we're talking about breathing, relaxing, this is the most critical because it involves a change in physiological presence. Earlier on, we've seen so many examples of the animal kingdom and the human minds when powerful athletes and performers worldwide have the same kind of characteristics. When they're opening up, expanding their fear, their spheres of influence, their fields, right? You are actually adjusting your body to prepare for the great performance. You can configure your brain and your mind to work in synchronous, uh, in synchronized manner to the performance. What do I mean by that? Right? Um, anybody knows about neuro linguistic programming or read about neuro linguistic programming? In short, it's called the NLP. Right? Okay. Just in brief, NLP is a technique that help you control the state management of. You know, some people have experienced trauma in their life and using the NLP program, they can actually reconfigure the state so that, for instance, if they are, uh, have a fear of heights or a fear of cruising or seasick, right, these kind of uh, negative emotions can be overcome with state management. So similarly, this technique requires your mind to be in uh, control together with your body. What this means is that every time you have to make an important speech, right? You have to elevate your mood to a positive state. So you have to configure yourself. For instance, configuring your brain to cope with the best situation. So it could be that before you start, you would do, you would look at the mirror and tell yourself that you can do it or what is the outcome that you hope to achieve. And by doing that, you are relaxing. You're preparing for the big day. It could be a day where you're walking down your daughter or your granddaughter or children walking down the aisle. Oh, it's really nervous. You don't know what to say when you're making a toast. But these are the techniques that can help you visualize by breathing deeply, 
reconfiguring your mind together with your body. So what this means is that social psychologists have said that the increase in testosterone will make you become a more confident self. Now I'm not talking about alpha male or alpha female, but the increase in testosterone and the decrease in cortisol, which is your stressful hormones. Right? These are proven by research and it's gonna help you if you could do this activity daily, one to two minutes, I'm sure that any anxiety, any butterflies will no longer be there. Okay, if everybody can see me, right? Yesterday we did this, but the light was too dim, but I'm so great that today it's brighter so everybody can see each other, right? So if there's a partner beside you, I'd like you to do this activity. Even if you see that alone, you can follow me as well. So the first activity is a daily warm-up to loosen up all your muscles, your jaws around the facial to release that tension around, right? So it's, I call it the kiss, green and yawn. So you are supposed to do it in continuous form. For instance, we know how the kiss, right? So the kissing motion goes like this. You know, like a yawn action? And then the green, right? Green, the biggest green that you have. Kiss, green. So let's try this. Kiss and green first. Kiss, green. Okay, let's do it five times. If you're not too shy, you can turn to the person beside you. Alright. So when you're yawning in the morning or in the afternoon, you notice that your jawbone are opening up, right? You are releasing that kind of facial expression. So if you do it together, kiss, green, yawn. Let's see what happens. Okay. Do you feel your bones cracking up, right? Okay, you feel the jaw bones are opening up, you are relaxing. Can you imagine every morning you do this? This can greatly improve your articulation. And I'm sure you will not trip on any words. Another lesson that I learned is that I used to speak very quickly, like a bullet train. Every time I feel very anxious, I will speak very, very fast. And I have space fillers, for instance, basically, actually, and then, so. You know, these are the problems that most communicators have around the world. So what we do is that we breathe deeply. Every time we feel the tendency to to say words like basically, uh, um, I know, you know, so. Now these are not healthy words because these are distractions to the audience's mind. How can we get rid of that? <coughs> so every time you want to, you feel the tendency to do that, you pause and you just hold that pause and continue the next word, right? Use preaching words like however, moreover, and throughout the time and years, you get to practice, and once you record yourself and play back, you start to notice all these space fillers and distractions. Some of the audience and also some of the members that I've coached before, they have this problem. They always like to fidget a lot when they talk. Their bodies, their lower body will move. They're not rounded in the state. What this means is that the person doesn't look reliable if the person speaks because you're moving around, you're fidgety, you're, you're conveying to the audience that you might be lying or you're not prepared. So what you need to do is to ground yourself wherever you're standing, you know, feet pointing to the audience. This is called power standing. Power standing speaks of authority, it speaks of the confidence you're projecting to the audience's mind, right? If you experience a situation where the stage or the platform is a very huge stage like this. You need to visualize the stage in segments. So it's just like a, a drama theater, right? You have to configure in your mind and draft the speech such that there is an act one, scene one, act two, scene two. So that every space of the stage, there is a purposeful movement. There's a purposeful gestures that you're giving and giving the audience more and more delight more and more um, mystery. For instance, if you're talking about the negative emotions, it can be on the left side, right, over here. And then you're talking about the positive emotions it can be at the opposite side. Because visually, in the audience mind, you can see very clearly 
the negative and the positive, the state of mind, the past, present, and the future. This is what we call the timeline of visual signposting. This is really impactful if you have to deliver uh, messages to your audience in sequential order, timeline, and to show the contrast between a before and after impact. So, the, lay, the second activity that we will do will be a tongue twister. This will be a simple one. It's called the red lorry, yellow lorry. This is just four words. But I'd like to test all of you, right? You can do it yourself right now. Repeat about eight times without running over the words. Okay, let's do that. Red, lorry, yellow, lorry. Red, lorry, yellow, lorry. Red, lorry. Oh, you see? You get to trip on the words. So if you practice daily like this, red, lorry, yellow, lorry. Red, lorry, yellow, lorry. Red, lorry, yellow, lorry. Soon, you get to know that your speech will be smooth. And whatever you conjure up, the images, the messages in your mind, you'll be articulate, articulated well with your speech. So this is a secret technique of practicing tongue twister as well as the key screen yawn technique to really relax your mind, your facial expression, such that your body gestures will be natural in front of the audience. And remember, every gesture you make, it has to be purposeful. And to add on to that, it is about the presence. What kind of spirit, what kind of presence are you bringing to the audience? If you are nervous, if you are sad, the audience can feel it. If you are happy, you're excited, enthusiastic, captivating, your voice, your voice will carry the charisma to speak life to the audience. Because ultimately, God created us beautifully as the message your body is the message that brings up the presence, the marvelous gems inside you to shine like a star. For instance, the state of mind I want to share today is about the presence, being yourself. You can only do this if you have completed the first stage and the second secret that I shared earlier on. And to add on to that, it's not about the content. What do I mean by that? Communications theory says that Although 100% of communication, 55% of communication stems from our body language, our visual aids. 38% goes to vocal variety, the tonality, the pitch, the tone that you project. And only a mere 7% goes into the words that were actually used. So does it mean that whatever I say does not mean anything to you? No, but all works together. What social psychology said is true because last night we have witnessed that. The visual comedy has no words at all. But people laugh, people were captivated, people were mesmerized. And I thought it was so timely because today's topic was just about body language. And to share a little story, back in the finals of the competition in Singapore for the humorous speech contest, I was the youngest contestant and a female candidate in the, the entire 14 contestants in total. Of course, I was not very experienced as the uh, uh, veteran Toastmasters. I was nervous. So what I did is I practiced all these techniques that I've shared with you. I prayed as well. I decided that I will be natural. I will be me. I will be the Shan Swan. So no matter what ugly duckling or ugly days that were behind me, I will leave it behind. But today, my life force comes with encouraging the people in the audience to share with them a piece of knowledge, a piece of lesson that I so acquired in my ugly duckling days. So what I did is to have an anchor. I weave in deliberately the content to have a beautiful black swan. Because ultimately, the message that I delivered to the audience was that all of us can be a brave, bold, and courageous one. It can be a swan, it can be an eagle, it can be an animal, it can be an animal, any character that you want to be. So I configure my body and my state of mind and anchor 
the message to the audience with a beautiful black swan like this. So what I made is that I configure a puppet, a hand puppet, using a customized arm cover. So what I did is because I have a lot of ideas, creative ideas for my father when I was growing up. One day when I stepped into a store, I saw a very simple arm cover that is like a sun shade. So I decided to buy it. And then I found another button that looks like an eye. So what I did is a very simple thing. I just sold the, the um, the eye onto the arm puppet and it became it became part of the message it became an anchor so every time i want to talk about a positive affirmation i will talk about the beautiful black swan with an anchor so that in a fleet of 14 contestants the judges the audience they could remember me and the speech became so iconic and so resounding voice that came from the stage that they remember me today as the swan so what I'm saying is that you don't have to be a swan that I, I used to be, but you can develop that creative thing that you know of, that your talent, your gifting, it can be a piece of art, it can be a social line dance, it can be something that is so close to your heart that you can infuse to the audience mind within that message. That it will be very impeccable. So all in all, captivating the audience mind is about being in the present moment, being yourself, being your skin. So all these things that you will feel like being comfortable, authentic, captivating, enthusiastic, confident, and passionate. The audience can feel your vibes because all of us are humans. Wherever energy that you convey, they will receive. expanding your presence, let me touch briefly on high power poses. In a lot of HR and hate hunter and employers, they have shared the same findings. They will always hire the people with high power poses. And they can witness that in the simple interview that they conduct, whether the candidate or the performer is really relaxing, conveying the authentic body gestures that they want to see. Because these are the people who are active, they are enthusiastic about the role and they have the potential to be great leaders in the future. And having high power posing will actually help you control your emotions, your testosterone as well. There is one activity that I always like to do. This is called the Wonder Woman Pose. Right? It goes like this. Your arms will be on your hips. The other one that you saw earlier on with Oprah Winfrey doing that is this of the power posing. <laughs> the arms behind your head and leaning back on the chair. Right? Another one that you saw earlier on is actually the victory pose. Right? So this is, these are all power poses that you can do, but of course, in your private space, you don't want to let the audience see you doing that before the show, right? So what you can do is that in hidden corners like elevators, in the back corridors, or in your bathroom, I'm sure you can do that. And another one is that you can do power walks. How does it go? For instance, we have seen a lot of models on the runway, and this looks exactly like them. So you find a long corridor or a back alley where you have room to do power walks, and what you need to do is to take big strides. You can do this back and forth several times. Why is this important? Because by doing that, you are increasing your testosterone and decreasing your cortisol such that your body is relaxed. It's just like when you're doing yoga, right? All of us, some of us have done yoga exercise or line dance before. It gives them this, the kind of euphoria, the kind of pleasant memories, right? So these are the power activities that you can do to remember that. So every time you go for a very stressful interview, presentation, remember the power walks. It will drive your positive energy up so that you will perform spectacularly in front of an audience. 
So ladies and gentlemen, in summary, I share with you the secret techniques of being a spectacular performer, thinker or speaker. And these are the tips that I've uh, shared with you about speaking up, doing warm-up activities, simple ones that you can share because after all, it is about the art and science of reconfiguring your body, your state of mind. And secondly, it's about humor. Humor connects and engages the audience the fastest way. And if you use that together with personal storytelling, wow! You will wow the audience and mesmerize them immediately. And be careful and be mindful because humor is very subjective. Another joke is that sometimes I will practice jokes in front of many audience in to children because they are most innocent and they will give you the most uh, authentic response you can get. I will practice in front of my family and friends. I would also practice in front of a taxi driver <laughs> because taxi drivers are like strangers to us, right? So they, they can give you very good feedback as well. And also if you're comfortable, find a group of uh, people in the cafe and you can try your own stand-up comedy and try a few uh, punchline, fine-tune it improvised lines such that your jokes appeal to the audience so that you can contextualize the jokes. Right? In one occasion, I didn't pronounce my words very well. I say duck, D-U-C-K, as duck, D-A-R-K, because these two words appear in my speech. Right? So every time I talk about the dark, ugly days versus the duck, Right? So you have to emphasize and use uh, words clearly so that people can receive the message. So authenticity is about being yourself. You cannot modify or let somebody craft your message and you deliver it. Because if you are the creator of the message, even if you forget your lines, you can always replace it to reflect the emotions, the feelings that you want to convey to the audience. Like today, I don't memorize every single word. You can just share from the deep, of, uh, from your heart, the sincerity will go forth and the audience will receive the message. And lastly, about being nice and novelty, right? About being nice is being nice to yourself by being prepared and being nice to the audience and being polite to them. And also, finally, novelty. Novelty is about creating your signature sound. Signature sound of your personality that lets you shine. Maybe you can do um, a gesture, an opening gesture before you start to captivate attention. Or you can start with a powerful quotation, like Zig Ziglar said, you don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. Right? So you have to find a novelty factor to show that your branding is there. Your branding, your iconic statement is there. Wherever you go, you are the gem that conveys the message to the audience. And hopefully through this segment and this session, you'll remember me as Singapore Swan or Singapore Shan Swan that brings you a different flavor of Singapore from the sunny island. This is one of my favorite verses. You don't change who you are, but become more of who you are. Because all that God has given you, all that you can be, is all within you. As long as you configure your mind, your body, to be in synchronized together, they are connected. And I'm sure that the next time you step on any platform, any stage, any stressful situation, you are able to configure your nervousness, your anxiety, your frustration, any negative emotions into a beautiful butterfly. So ladies and gentlemen, you are a masterpiece. You can think, perform, and speak like a star anytime. So I hope we can stay connected after the cruise, during the cruise, you can log on to my website at www.shanswan.com and you may also find me on Facebook because I'm a social media activist. I'm very passionate about speaking, communicating, and I love to stay in touch and receive all your feedback and questions that you may have.
So yes, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for your precious time spent spent here with me, and I wish you a fabulous Friday ahead in this former night, and take as many photos that you can. And if you see me along anywhere in the venue, come up to me and say hi, and let's do uh, more fun, coaching, interacting with each other. Let's make more new friends. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.